What's going on y'all and welcome on in. Today I just want to do a brief guide on Shadow Knight Pilots, the latest specialty change unit. Guys, you heard me on my patch preview. She looks so good. I had to build her ASAP and even if her kit wasn't that great, I think I would have built her regardless because she just because she looks so dang good. Now that being said, I got some good news guys. Compared to a lot of the other specialty change units, I think she holds a lot of promise, especially in PvP and especially for the current meta. Now I don't think she's as strong as units like Carrot, and I think a lot of y'all that have the meta knights like Fallen Cecilia, um, Crimson Armin, you can still just use those instead and those will work just fine. However, if you don't have those units or if you just like SE Pilots, I do think she has enough reason to bring her, especially versus units that have dual attacks, counter attacks, or if we just want to hit these annoying stealth units. I'll cover all that in a little bit. Um, she just feels really good, guys. So far, I've only mostly tested Arena because I still have to do my placements for RTA, and I don't want to bring her versus bronze players while I'm doing placements. I can't tell how good she's actually performing or if I just have better gear than my opponent, but that'll come soon. Make sure y'all stop by the Twitch channel. A lot of y'all are stopping by. Always love to see y'all. But let's go ahead and, as you can see above, let's go ahead and cover how to unlock her special change along with the pro tips I found along the way during the stream today. It's so fast, guys. I think this is the fastest special change unit they've added in terms of the requirements to get her. So all y'all watching, if you're kind of on the fence, it's so easy, just get it done. I'll show you how and extremely fast, probably less than, if y'all are fast guys, 30 minutes or less to, to unlock the entire SC. Um, as well, let's cover some basic builds, gearing tips, uh, where to bring her, and then we'll cover different artifacts and then skill priority, things like that, okay? Hopefully also I'll show some gameplay footage from Arena where I was bringing her. And I actually think guys, compared to Lightning, it's Arena's where she's going to shine because the teams are flooded with Rem and Violet's Bellions 2, all units that she's going to excel against. So those of you that have trouble with those units and don't have some of the Meta Knights, make sure y'all build her right now. Okay, guys, let me know actually in the comments below where you're at in Arena. And because for me, I just AFK and champion and I still see Rem, Violet, like 80% of the comps. Um, Rem or Violet and 100% of the comps, especially Bellion as well. Let me know if you guys see them, especially if you're in other ranks, Challenger... Emperor, if you're above me, or sorry, not Emperor, Legend, or, um, you know, anywhere below, Silver, Gold, Bronze. Do you see a lot of Rem Violets, too? Let me know. Okay, so let's go in and get this out of the way, guys. Just quick tips on how to unlock her SC as fast as possible. Um, the first things, first thing we're going to want to do is go to... Um, I like to go to Unrecorded History, guys, and most of y'all should be able to do this as well. That way we can farm some catalysts while you do it. But we're going to head over to 9-2 and complete 9-8 tomb of the false soldier the reason i want y'all to do this on un unrecorded history is can remember my pro tips guys if you watch any of my, any of my other videos we always want to make sure we're double dipping so while we while we're unlocking sc pilots we're going to be doing a few things here we're going to be farming ap for these other catalysts right and we're picking a stage that drops it plus it's going to get us the uh the requirements for sc and on top of that we want to make sure we bring pilots into the group okay while you're farming this, guys, for the 150 kills, make sure you bring Pilots in the group because we're going to need Friendship 4 as well. And we're going to want to also... I didn't even grab it from my box here just to show y'all. We want to run this artifact too, okay? Just put it on her. Bring some other farming units to make it faster. And hopefully with this, you may need to give her a few Friendship gift boxes, but you can even get that from the current side story, the slime side story, the dark ones. But give her any Friendship boxes that you might have extra of. Plus, while you farm the SC, the 150 kills... If you have this on, it should be very fast, okay? So get this done here in 9-8 really fast. It shouldn't take longer than 20, 30 minutes if you're even going at a decent speed. Maybe a little longer if you're newer, but you'll be able to get it done. After that, all we got to do is head over to the Labyrinth, and you're going to want to go to Great Farshi. Great Farsh, however you say it, Area 1. Most of y'all should have this unlocked. You're going to want to just go in, and I'll show y'all real fast. Jump into the stage. We're going to want to teleport to the far left. We just head east. A few steps here. And then we immediately fight Mercer, okay? And the nice thing is, you know, Shadow Knight Palace is meant to kill units like Mercer, Or at least lock them down so your other units can uh, f have free reign. But regardless, you're going to kill her. And then make sure, guys, you don't yield out. I'm going to yield out here because I already finished it. But you're going to have to teleport out so you get the... Um, kill completion for the mercy okay and that's it guys you just do those two things do the quick trial battle and you're done it is so easy um along with side, of course the friendship four which i mentioned you're going to do with the farming for the 150 kills in 9-8 they did a great job smallgate did a good job on just making that so so simple okay now let's go ahead and talk about palace in general all right guys so here is my building i'm going to cover the stat lines i kind of went 
I kind of shot for. So the main thing is I did want her on Aureus, all right? So we'll go over artifacts here in a little bit, but the main thing I want to start with is I emphasize health because if you run Aureus on your knight, the de you need to make sure you have a lot of health because this is the damage here is not mitigated at all by defensive stat, right? You just take a lot of percentage HP um, from... You know, it's just an amount of damage you take when you damage share. And so if your health is too low and you just stack all defense, you're going to die very, very quickly. The reason I wanted Aureus, though, is because in this meta, a lot of times I you can only really one you can only run one knight and Pylos or any knight in general needs to do a lot of stuff, right? They need to provide something for your team. Uh, what Pylos provides is barriers. Now she'll have a cleanse. She also can provide uh, damage reduction, which is the huge one versus counter units, uh, extra attack units, things like that. And she also provides CR push for her team as well. On top of a potential AoE defense, after getting hit multiple times, she provides a lot for the team. And I really wanted the Aureus to make sure she she acted like a soul knight. Some of y'all will want to build bruiser builds, maybe run like noble oaths, things like that. Elbrus to make her more annoying. But if you want just a general purpose knight, guys, that'll just work versus a lot of these Rem Violet Billion teams. Try build like this out, okay? The reason this works so well, we have enough defense to provide big barriers. The damage is just whatever. It's mediocre. You'll have to probably build some crit chance crit damage or massively scale defense with the Noble Oath if you want her to hit a lot harder. But on top of that, we have effect resist. And remember, she gets 60% passive effect resist from her Awakening Tree as long as she's above 70% health. So if you have any type of sustain and she's providing barriers, she's going to be able to stay healthy relatively um, with so much damage reduction that she'll always have. Like for me, I have 175 ER here. Only the most dedicated of debuffers will be able to kind of stop her from doing her job. Right, everyone else that doesn't build enough effectiveness, they're not going to be able to debuff this this uh, Shadow Knight Pilus. The speed, as long as she's not mega slow, guys, she has a lot of CR. Like I, I keep mentioning, a lot of combat readiness push whenever she provokes, whenever she skill threes, um, and whenever she gets hit, things like that. It's okay to make her a little bit slower, but I like her at this speed. That way, we can get a skill three cleanse. Let's see our opponent hits us with some debuffs early. If she goes before the DPS, you know, there's a potential chance we we uh cleanse some of those annoying debuffs before our, our dps goes but just don't make her too slow guys and she'll perform well this is the build i like like i mentioned i do want to try a damage build um maybe like a noble oath build but so far this works just fine and i think this is the one of the better builds if not it's the probably overall stat line wise i think this is the best build if you just want a general purpose knight that specializes against um both protecting your team and fighting evasion units or counter units all right now since she's a three star there is no molar requirement so if you want get everything however a lot of us that pulled milim i think we had to use baby mouse insignias too so you may be short on that if you wanted to save some catalyst guys and you're building a just non-damage uh support pilus go ahead and just get minus one turn cooldown on the skill three this is very important guys because with the soul burn minus uh two turn skill cooldown we're going to be able to spam the skill threes non-stop and that's going to lock down a unit that's going to continually provide cleansing, and that's going to provide big barriers as well as combat readiness push. It's really, really fun. It's really effective. It keeps your team healthy, locks the unit down. It's so good to just spam the skill three. Um, I think this is one of her biggest selling points. So make sure you get the minus one turn cooldown there. Skill two, try to get as high as possible. And skill one, make sure we just get the 15% effect chance because we really want to land those provokes outside of spamming this. If we ever run out of souls, if you don't want to spam it, um, or if you're like running a Elbris or counter build. Make sure we get the effect chance because provoking units also synergizes really well on top of locking some annoying unit down. Um, beyond that, guys, artifact selection. I think I mentioned all the strengths of Aureus. Remember, we can stack a damage share with, with her passive damage reduction against counter units. So that's going to be huge in providing. It's just going to make your backline so much tankier, guys. You can probably provide barriers, defense up, damage share, and if it is a Violet, Ram, Belly, and any other counter unit, Apocalypse Ravi, whatever, whatever it is, she's going to provide a lot of damage reduction from her Awakening Tree passive plus the Aureus. So I really recommend trying this if you just want an all-purpose knight in the beginning. But I mentioned you can do other artifacts such as Steadfast Gatekeeper for providing a lot of AoEs. Um, Rise of a Monarch might be okay. Most of the knight artifacts guys will be fine. Um, but I don't think she's fast enough. She does have a lot of the combat readiness push, so maybe... Um, Elbrus, I think people will try or counter set just because if we build a lot of defense on her, her spamming a lot of skill one provokes could be really annoying. Um, and then Noble Oath, I think is a big one for a lot of y'all. If you just want her to be mega tanky, unkillable, unbuff, undebuffable while providing a lot of damage boost as well. Cause remember she scales off defense. 
and big barriers, um, Noble Oath could be very good. But I like to have a less selfish knight, a more team supported knight. So that's why I go with Aureus. All right, guys. Overall, bring her against all those annoying Rem Violets and go to town, boys. I think a lot of you should build her. She's so easy to build. No molar requirements at all, especially if you don't have Fallen Cecilia. Even if you have Fallen Cecilia or some of the other Meta Knights, I think she'll have a spot. And the fact that she looks so good on top of it, guys, the main thing is just make sure you all got a lot of the... Um, the Awakening Tree Runes, right? Because it is pretty expensive. You guys know the drill, though. It's always expensive to build these up. But just farm on those hunt days with double runes. Or hopefully you had some saved up from the hunt event we just got. But all these runes together, guys. The combat readiness push. The chance to hit dodge units like rem uh, Remnant Violets, Regular Violets, Mersas, whatever have you. With the skill, with the S3 plus the skill, um, just the random 30% hit chance overall means no stealth units are safe. We soul burn spam skill three, get all this combat readiness goodies. We get a additional 60% effect resist, so she's unbuffable. She's just a solid knight, guys. That even has a little bit of self healing, um, base effectiveness, so she can provoke, provoke more. All the yeah. I can't go on about how good she is. You guys know, we kind of covered in the patch preview, but overall, she just works really well. Low investment cost, so fast to build, and actually very relevant to the current meta, okay? So try her out, guys, and I'll let you know. I think she even has potential in RTA, but right now, even just for Arena, she's so good because of how many Remnant or, uh, Rem plus Violet teams are just running amok, okay? Anyways, guys, I think we'll wrap it up there. Just a short and sweet guide. Thank you so much for watching. I got more content coming very soon. Catch you in the next one. Peace out, everybody.